The next thing for us to discuss in this glossary series is Eirein Seif, which we call godliness, or in Yiddish, Getlechkeit, with the clear demarcation that you have in the Maimorim, that there's God and Getlech, Elaka and Elakus, there's God and godliness. We're not talking about Hashem, we're talking about Hashemliness, godliness. And godliness is called in Kabbalah, Eir Ein Seif, Oir Ein Seif. Now, to talk about Oir Ein Seif, we have to first talk about the term Ein Seif itself. And to talk about the Torah, the meaning of the word Ein Seif, we have to introduce ourselves first to the term Ein Tchila. And it's... So I, I just had three different things. Eid ain't safe, ain't safe, ain't chila. We're going to work it backwards now, okay? Ain't chila is an expression that is introduced by the Ramem Mipanu, the Menachem Azari Mipanu, who wrote the Sefer Asar Mamores, amongst others. He was a great Gon and Kaddish who lived in Italy. He wrote Svarim and Nigla as well. He's a famous Gon. And he was a Talmud of a Talmud of the Arizal. And he questioned the veracity of the term main safe. He challenged it. And of course, Hasidus brings in his name from a variety of different sources, from the Pelach Arimein, and from another one of his Sfarim. And his challenge is obvious. And the way the challenge is presented is with a phrase that's uh, catchy and important to use. The phrase is, Kol kadme nitzchi v'lei kol nitzchi kadme. Or kol she'ein le tchila ein le tichla v'lei kol she'ein le tichla ein le tchila. Both of those phrases say more or less the same thing. Everything that has no beginning has no end. But not everything that has no end doesn't have a beginning. And his argument is that it's difficult to call Hashem, God, ain't safe. Because ain't safe means he has no end. And ain't safe does not necessarily include ain't chila, no beginning. And ain't chila certainly includes no ain't safe. If something has no beginning, that means it exists only from itself. If it doesn't have a beginning, there's no reason to think that it would have an end. Or to use a classic term from philosophy, which is probably the most simple way of defining God. Philosophy calls Hashem, calls God Almighty, His existence is from Himself. Saying that God's existence from, is from Himself, Himself alone, is the exact same thing as saying that He always was. Because if nobody created Him except for Himself, He had to have always been in order to be able to be. So one's existence is only from Self, is a philosophical way of saying ain't like tchila, no beginning. And the Rameh argues that we should separate the word ain't tchila from ain't safe. And we should apply ain't tchila to Hashem, to Gott, Elaka. And we should apply ain't safe to Hashemliness, to Getlechkeit, to Elakus. Because that's the difference between God and godliness. God has no beginning. Godliness is a radiation, it's an expression, it, we call it a light, a reflection, from from God Almighty. So he has no beginning, his reflection has a beginning, the beginning of his reflection is himself, but it has no end. And the reason there's no end is because it's a reflection of him. And since he's absolutely infinite, so his light is also absolutely infinite. However, the light has a trilo. The source is the beginning of light, and he has no tchila. So this is the first thing that needs to be said when having this conversation about godliness. That there's an argument to be made by the Makubalim that are very important in Chabad, that God would be called a tchila and God would be called a safe. Then Chassidus complicates this by saying that the Ramak, Ramesha Kudavidu, who is several generations before the Ramemi Panu, holds that Ein Seif is Hashem. And in the Samach Vov, the Rebbe Rashab, 
struggles with explaining this. Why would the Ramak say that Hashem is ain't safe? Uh, it's preferred to say that ain't safe refers to the oil, to godliness, not to God, to Elokus, not to Elaka, to Getlich, and not God. And the, Rame, the Ramak, the Mesha Kordaviru, nevertheless says that ain't safe goes on Atzmas. And in the Samach Bob, there's a discussion trying to explain why that is. And basically, what the Rebbe Rashab presents is that ain't safe means has no limits at all, including not having the limit of not having a beginning. So the Rebbe Rashab is proposing that in saying ain't safe, you are saying in effect ain't chila, because if something is ain't safe and yesh chila, then it's not truly ain't safe. It seems from the bottom of the Rebbe, particularly it happens to be Bashgacha Pratis that we're learning Basilagan and Tafshech as I'm doing these recordings. In this particular Maimir, Basilagan and Tafshech this issue uh, comes up. And there is an additional aspect to explaining why the Ramak could be correct in saying that ain't safe can mean got or nishgetlech elika and not elikus god and not godliness even though we're not saying ain't chila we're saying ain't safe and this is rather uh, sophisticated and controversial and the explanation that Hasidus seems to add to the Ramak's insistence that ain't safe can be a reference to God and not only to godliness would be the following. One of the ideas that we talk about when we talk about that ain't safe, when we talk about godliness, is Ermena Moir, that the light is a reflection of the source. Now, when you say the light is a reflection of the source, there's two components to that. One component is that whatever the source has, the light reflects. The other component is that the light has no identity other than its attachedness to its source. In other words, one way of describing Eimein Amoyed is to speak about how sophisticated it is, how inclusive it is. Another way of explaining the phrase Eimein Amoyed is to articulate how bottle it is, how dovok it is, how it has no identity of its own. Like I like to say that Eimein Amoyed, which, which the correct word for that is really dvekas, which is even more than bittel, means to say that it has no I, it has no self-identity. And as I tell it to my students, if you would meet Aideen Safe, he'd be very boring. Whatever you would ask him, he would say, meet my source. Whatever you would ask him, he would say, meet my source. What's your name? Meet my source. How you doing? Meet my source. What would you like to do? Meet my source. And he's not being sarcastic because there is no I. It's simply whatever the source is reflected in the Oyer. And then Abayim argue that the bitl aspect of Oyer, the fact that Oyer is Me'ena Moir, not only in the sense that it reflects the source, but in the sense that it's completely Dovok, has no identity of its own, makes it a medium for carrying everything about Moed, including the idea of Ein Tchila. Even though Ein Tchila is a, is, is a reference to Hashem and not to Hashemliness, but the Dveikos, that means the utter bittel, the absolute bittel of light, of the divine light, of the infinite light, of the Ein Seif light, in its source is that the light carries even properties which light should not be able to carry. It carries the properties of the source itself, which is the idea of Ein Tchila, or Yesh. And this is, I think, a deeper aspect, even than what's written in the Samach Vav, in explaining why the Ramak is comfortable with saying that you can use the word Ein safe and mean God, and not only mean godliness. So we have a bit of a dispute. The Rameh, with an ayin, says that you should refer to Got, to Elaka, as Ein Tchilo, and to Get Lachai, to Elokus, to Godliness, as Ein Tzoyf. And the Ramak seems to believe, with a kuf, that it's okay to refer to Got, to Elaka, to God, as Ein Tzoyf. But one thing emerges that's consistent with both of these opinions. In other words, even though they disagree about what's the preferred allusion to Hashem, should you call him Ein Tchila or Ein Seif? 
But when it comes to oyrein seif, godliness, they seem to converge. In other words, that difference falls away when you're talking about godliness, elokus, getlichkeit, getlich, that they would both use the term eirein seif, derameh, as well as deramak, and what allows the two of them to share this illusion, this reference, has to do with the oir me'en hamoyer idea that I just spoke about a moment ago. And I'm going to leave this for the next segment. Thank you.